I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental, thank you for joining me. Now, I know a lot of you out there love your Alexandria fragrances, so I thought I'd put together a top five list of Alexandria fragrances, fragrances for autumn. Now, I do just need to let you know the brand did send me the fragrances free of charge, along with this mug. This video is definitely not sponsored by Alexandria fragrances. Rest assured, all my opinions will be completely honest and all my own. This does make coffee taste better though. I've spent quite a bit of time with all these fragrances I'm about to talk about in this video. I've had them for a few months and I've not made any content about them because I just think that they're all going to shine in autumn. So I just thought it would be great to put together a top five list of Alexandria fragrances fragrances that I think are going to work really well for the, the upcoming autumn season. So of course we're looking at slightly richer compositions, maybe some darker notes in there, maybe a gourmand or two. You'll have to see what's coming up. So let's just start off by taking a look at how the Alexandria fragrances fragrances come packaged these days. So the packaging was always fine for me. It used to come in a reasonably nice cardboard box with the name of the company on there and bottles were all fine but I do think that the latest presentation that they're going for is a little bit of an upgrade they've not gone too far they're not trying to be too fancy with it but I do like these boxes they even have a little pull tab on them fancy and the box is open in this kind of clamshell like action and then sitting inside You've got your juice just nicely nestled in an insert in there. Um, this is how the 30 mils come presented. And uh, I think the 50 mils come presented in a similar way, but the box is really nice. I, I think the design is good. It, it looks quite like a niche fragrance box. So I think we're looking at pretty decent presentation from Alexandria. Okay, let's get into the fragrances. The first one is called California Winter. Yes, I know it's got winter in the name, but I'm pretty sure California winters are probably still warmer than the English autumn. So I think this one just works perfectly. And when I explain to you the DNA and when I let you know the notes in this, you'll see why. So let's have a look at the bottle and the notes. There's saffron, raspberry, leather, pink pepper, jasmine and frankincense. So you might have picked up on those notes of saffron, jasmine, leather, raspberry. And if you know your fragrances, that might remind you of Tom Ford's Tuscan leather. Also Tom Ford's ombre leather as well. And I was surprised that this is an original creation because it definitely is that fruity leather DNA. So it does smell similar to Tuscan leather, ombre leather, but also smells similar to Godolphin as well from Parfum de Mali. In fact, I'd say it's a little sweeter than the Tom Ford's. So if anything, it's maybe closer to Godolphin, but it's not the same. It's just a similar DNA and the company aren't claiming that this is supposed to be an inspiration of Godolphin. So it's its own thing, but California winter is gonna give you that Tuscan leather kind of vibe. It's definitely not a heavy leather scent. It's airier and a little lighter than Tuscan leather. It's gonna be less divisive than that Tom Ford fragrance and I think for a lot of people more wearable possibly even more wearable than ombre leather I think it maybe is a little lighter uh, than ombre leather even so I really like it it's a, it's a slightly different take on a fruity leather but it's really well done it's smooth it's mass appealing and this kind of DNA just sings in autumn the next one I'm going to talk about is called Hachi Vaz I think this is an interpretation of Nishane's Hachi Vat this one has bergamot, pineapple, lemon, jasmine, patchouli, cedar, and oak moss. So this one is a citrus, woody, earthy scent, and it definitely smells similar to Hachivat. You can tell that uh, the Nishane fragrance is the inspiration for this, but I'd say this is a little lighter. I think the Hachivat is deeper, richer, and uh, much more of a, a dense, mossy type accord. This 
you get the citruses, so you get those refreshing citruses, but I don't think it goes as heavy on the moss. So maybe that would be a preference for some people. It just depends what your tastes are. So to me, it's just a slightly different take on that DNA, but still very enjoyable nonetheless. Like I said, some people might find the, the deep mossy accord from Hatchivat a little too much. So if that's the case, then you'll really enjoy this one. It has that freshness. It has a smoky woody accord, which make it a good option if you're in the mood for a fresher autumn scent. So if you get a warmer autumn day, this would be a good choice. For the next one, we are going full blown gourmand. I just wish I could eat this one or drink it or, or just do something to get it inside me, but I better not. So this one is based on Italica from Zerzhoff. Notes are milk, almond, saffron, vanilla, toffee, sandalwood, cedar, and musk. I haven't smelled the original Zerzhoff, so I can't compare it directly, but I gotta say, this smells really high quality. It's a beautiful gourmand fragrance. So if you like sweetness in fragrances, you're gonna love this one. It reminds me a little bit of House of Siage number one as well, which is one of my favorite gourmand fragrances. Not exactly the same as that, but it's kind of in that territory. So if you're familiar with that one or the Zerzhoff, then you'll have an idea of, of how this one smells. Alexandria described this one as having milk and cookies accord, and I do get that, but this to me just has the most mouth-watering caramel, mouth-watering as I'm saying it, has the most mouth-watering caramel accord I think I've smelled in any fragrance. It's, it's so delicious that you want to eat it. It smells like it should be edible, just smells fantastic. But the sweetness, it's not overbearing, it's not too cloying, it's got a good woody backbone in here just to balance things out. If you have a sweet tooth and you enjoy smelling delicious, then I think you should probably try Italian caramel. Next one is called Danger Zone, which is very similar to Roger Parfum's Danger Pour Homme. This one has citrus, florals, woods, and lovely herbal nuances as well. So this is an oriental fragrance. It's got a sweet powdery quality to it, but what I love about this is it seems to mix the oriental aspects with like an old school gentleman's cologne. So you've got those herbal qualities and the mix of those two. To me, it smells so good. I adore this fragrance. And this scent DNA just reminds me of Milan when I went to Essence. I wore Danger for the first time uh, in Italy and I smell this and it just gives me the feels of that moment, that night that I wore Danger on, on that trip. So to me, it does smell very, very similar to, to Danger Pour Homme. If you've not smelled Danger, I'm sure many of you have absolutely fantastic scent. If you want to smell charming and sophisticated and have a good bit of attitude about you as well, then I can really recommend this fragrance. So if the original is a little bit out of your price range, perhaps it's worth giving Danger Zone a go. And the qualities of this, again, I just think really, really shine in autumn. The final fragrance I'm gonna talk about is called Oud Diction. This is very similar to Initio's Oud for Greatness. It has lavender, saffron, nutmeg, oud, patchouli, and musk. I just think this is such a good version of this scent, and it's very aptly named because there is something addictive about it. You just, you can't stop smelling it. This has woods and spices and a bit of creaminess, and then I also get this dry earthiness from it as well, which is just intriguing. The whole, the whole blend of the scent is just, intriguing. It's a very tension grabbing scent. I think this is really going to make a statement but in a good way because I think it has quite a bit of mass appeal. The oud in here is not too strong. It doesn't smell skanky oudy at all to me so maybe the the oud is more of a supporting note but my wife loves this one. This is one of those fragrances well it was the original that she complimented but this smells very close to it and it's one of those fragrances that she went out of her way to tell me that she really enjoyed it and she's not that into fragrances she's not that interested so for her to to go and do that for her to to let me know to give me an unsolicited compliment is uh is a sign that she really enjoys this fragrance i'm not saying that's across the board for all women it might just be my wife and demi rolling oh that's an image 
Anyway, um, so I digress. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. Oh yes, that's what I was going to say. This is one of those fragrances that, you know you have those days and you don't know what to wear, but you know you wanna wear something good. You know you wanna wear something that's got your back. Maybe you're going out to some kind of event, uh, you're going out to, to meet friends, or you're just going somewhere, you're looking good and you wanna smell good and you want a no-nonsense fragrance that is absolutely going to achieve that. It's going to make a statement. It's probably gonna get you some compliments and you're just gonna feel great wearing this. Well, both the original and Oud Diction, I think, it's a fragrance that is going to give you all those things. It's really well blended. It's very close to the original. If someone was to blindfold me and ask me to smell these side by side and tell the difference, I think I might struggle. All right, there you go. Five great fragrances from Alexandria for the autumn. There are loads of other great options from the house that I've mentioned in previous years that I I haven't mentioned in this video because I thought I'd bring some new ones to your attention, but you could also try Royal Equestrian, which is similar to Parfum de Mali Leighton. You could try No Apologies, which is a beautiful take on Nasamato's Pardon. And one of my absolute favorites from the house is an original. Everybody loves this one. It's Hafez 1984. You cannot go wrong with any of those fragrances in the autumn. But I did five for this video. Do check out the others if you haven't tried those because they are also absolutely fantastic. Let me know what your favorites are from Alexandria. I'm always impressed with the quality. I think they do a complex, richer, heavier scents particularly well. So let me know which ones you've tried that maybe I haven't. And uh, if you can recommend them to me, then I'd love to try them. So that would be great. Leave some comments down below. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. It's always appreciated. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next one.